So Moog recently announced a reissue of their 16-channel hardware vocoder. Sounds really exciting, but it's also extremely expensive at $5,000. So I figured, why not create one from scratch using Ableton Live? This would also be a great way to understand how a vocoder functions. Now you could just use the built-in vocoder plugin in Ableton Live, but I think it's a lot more fun to create your own from scratch. Let's have a listen to the final result of this. Alright, so we're going to start from scratch. We're not going to use any programming in Max for Life, just using Ableton Live devices. Never gonna give you so we need to split this signal into 16 separate individual bands and analyze the amplitude changes over time. I'm going to use the EQ8 to do the band splitting. Now to figure out the actual values of the different bands, we can just look at the vocoder front panel. So this first band here starts at 50 hertz and goes up to 159 hertz. So I just need two bands on this EQ here, and I'll switch them both to this four times steepness curve. The high pass frequency is going to be set at 50 hertz, and the low pass set at 159. Alright, so that's the first band. Now to analyze the amplitude changes, we will make use of an envelope follower. There's one built in. It's actually part of Max for Live. So as long as you have Ableton Live Suite, you have this device. Now I'm going to select both the devices and right click here and choose group. So now the two devices are placed in this audio effect rack and I'm going to rename this first chain to band 1. Let's now duplicate this chain. I'll rename this to band 2. The range for this band is going to be from 159 to 200 hertz. Okay, before moving on to the next band, I'm going to adjust the Q on this band a little bit because it's a bit too narrow. I'll increase it just enough so we start to see the curve cross that zero crossing line. Alright, that should be enough. Alright, now duplicate this. We name this to band 3. Change the frequency on the two filters. Again, referencing the Moog vocoder. It's 200 to 252. Alright, so this is the tedious part where we go through all the individual bands up to band 16, setting the filter frequency based on the Moog vocoder. Alright, so I'm going to fast forward through this section. Just make sure that for each band, you need to also have the envelope follower. Alright, so all the 16 bands have been set up. Let's have a listen to the signal. Never gonna give you up. So the main information we need from this signal is the amplitude changes in each of the different bands. And that's essentially what we have on the envelope follower. Now it would be a good idea to save this entire audio effect track. You wouldn't want to go through this process every time you want to create a vocoder analyzer. Alright, now that the analysis stage is done, we need to apply the analysis to the carrier signal. And in our case here, the carrier signal is wavetable. You can use any sound here, but ideally you want to have a clean, simple sound like a sawtooth tone. That's what I have set up over here. Alright. Now for the actual resynthesis of the sound. I'm going to option drag this vocoder analysis audio effect rack onto the wavetable track. It's going to take a couple of seconds because it's a large audio effect rack. Alright, now we don't need the envelope follower here. So let's go ahead and delete the envelope follower for each of the individual bands. Again, slightly tedious. So I'm going to fast forward through this section.
All right, so I've removed all the individual envelope followers. Now we just need to apply the amplitude changes from those individual bands from the analysis section onto the synth signal. The best way to do this would be to map the envelope follower to the level for each of the individual chains. So I'll click on map here, and on wavetable, I'll click on the level for the first channel, and now it's mapped. And then I'll repeat this process for the other bands. Important to ensure that the analysis band matches the band on the synth. Another tedious section of this process, so I'm going to fast forward again. Alright, so I've mapped all the envelope followers from the analysis bands onto the synthesis bands. And that's essentially it. I'm going to bring the level down on the original vocals, and let's just listen to the synthesizer. We need to have both of them running. I'll mute this middle track here for now. Let's launch the scene. Alright, so we hear something and we see the amplitude changes on the individual bands. But the gain is really, really low. Fortunately, there's a gain control on the envelope follower. So what I'll do is open up the macro section and I'll map the gain dial to that first macro. And again, I'll do this for all the 16 bands. Let's fast forward again. Alright, so the gain control on all the envelope followers have been assigned to that first macro. So now I can increase the gain on all of them simultaneously with this one dial. Let's have a listen now. So now the individual bands are reacting a bit better. Keep in mind we're just listening to the synth. Pretty amazing. Just by applying the amplitude changes from the voice onto the synth and we can hear the vocal-like qualities in the synth. I'm going to save this audio effect rack as well. I'll call this the vocoder synthesis. So now we have two of those racks. Actually, I'm going to resave the vocoder analysis audio effect rack because we added the gain control. So now we have the two audio effect racks. Now one element that's missing in our vocoder here is the consonant sound from the voice. Now we don't have a way to detect from the voice when we're hearing a consonant and when we're hearing a vowel sound. But in a very simplified approach, we can assume that the noise element is in this highest band. Like the sibilance, for example. So we can just assume that that signal is the noise signal. I've set up another track here. This is analog, and the oscillators are turned off, and we just have the noise generator. It's running through a filter. I'll delete this effect for now. So whenever we have activity in that highest 16th band, I want to hear the noise coming out of this analog synth. I've sequenced a note on this track, so the noise should be constantly running. If I bring the volume up, we should be able to hear it. So now we need to bring this level up whenever there's activity on that highest vocoder band. Going back into the analyzer audio effect track on band 16, I need to add another mapping over here, and let's map that to the volume control on the synth. So we can hear the noise, but overall it's a bit too soft. I'm just going to make the track louder and bring up the level on this amp here.
This could work a bit better if we were to gate the signal. So I load in a gate effect right after here. And let's sidechain this gate to open only when there is signal on that 16th band. So I'll choose the vocal track here and the second drop down menu. I'll scroll down here to band 16 and select both effects. Adjust the threshold. I'll get rid of the hold on the gate. Bring the noise floor all the way down. So it's not perfect, but this would be one way to simulate the consonant sound coming out of the vocal track. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. So that's how to create a vocoder from scratch in Ableton Live.